free content versus paid content, the ultimate strategy. Here's exactly how much content to share for free and what content you need to include in your paid products and why you don't actually need to worry about this anymore. So let me ask you a question. Do you sell info products or educational products? One of the biggest questions that any entrepreneur that sells information has is how can I tell the difference between my paid products and my free content? It's always a tricky consideration when you charge money for information, but you also give it away for free. Where do you draw the line between paid and free? Should there be any overlap between the two? And is there any way to tell the difference between paid content and free content? Today, I'm sharing my exact strategy with you to set your mind at rest finally. Never again will you have to worry about whether you are giving away too much for free. My name is Kath Kyle and I lead the Hustle Less, Manifest More movement. I help creators and change makers manifest a massive audience and transform millions of lives by creating a magnetic movement using my proven dream business framework. And if you haven't already downloaded my ultimate guide to creating a magnetic movement, I encourage you to do that. This guide is a PDF that covers all of the details involved in creating a magnetic movement and building a tribe of millions. And if you don't like reading, I have also created a video tutorial that walks you through the entire process. And if you don't have time to watch a video, I have also shared the audio so you can listen to this on the move. So I highly encourage you to go and grab that now by going to kathkyle.com forward slash movement guide. So I have had several successful content based online businesses over the last 10 years. And I have often asked myself the same questions about free versus paid content. I've had a lot of time to test different strategies and I have figured out what works well for me. So that's what I'm sharing with you today to save you from wondering and worrying about how much to share in your free content. So should you share the what and the why and charge for the how? So I hear people say all the time that in your free content, you should share the what and you should share the why, but in your paid products, you should be focused on sharing how to do something. So this can work well for some people, but personally, it's not a strategy that I like to follow. Some people do seem to be able to grow big audiences by just telling people what to do over and over again. But to me, that isn't creating valuable content and it can be wasting people's time. So like, for example, if you tell somebody what to do, you can say, you just need to be creating more content, creating more content. And then that's just telling them the what over and over again. Or you need to maybe even telling them why, why you should create content, because the more content you create, the more chances you've got of people finding you. So you just share the what and the why, what and the why over and over and over again. But then people are always asking, but how? How do I do that? What kind of content should I create? How often should I share it? Should it be, you know, how much free content? How much paid content. There's all these questions that people ask about how to do something. And there is really stiff competition when it comes to content. And with more and more people sharing the how, if you don't personally share how somebody should do something, why would your audience follow you instead of following someone else that they feel like they're getting better value from? Of course, if you are entertaining or if there's something very captivating about your own personality, showing up on video or podcast without telling people exactly what to do can really brighten up someone's day. But is it really helping people to simply be entertaining them rather than helping them solve a problem when your main mission in life is to help people solve problems. There are so many people out there who literally can't afford to buy your expensive courses and coaching packages. And my own personal motto is that I help as many people as I possibly can, whether or not they are paying me. 
the more people I help for free, the more it motivates me to continue with my mission. And I know that I'm going to be rewarded for helping people in other ways. I am someone who likes to change millions of lives and you don't do that by luring people towards your paid content by not giving much that can help them unless they buy your products. A very small fraction of your audience will actually buy your products. So if you only help the people who actually pay you, you are missing out on something very valuable. And that thing that you're missing out on is word of mouth marketing. By helping millions of people for free, you are creating a very powerful movement that gets shared for free. And there is nothing better for your brand than having your content go viral and having people personally recommend you to their friends. I personally like to create big brands. That's just my personal preference and it's not for everybody. So I will not be able to create a big brand by selling info products without helping people to get real results for free. So I personally will tell people exactly how to get results for free without them having to pay me a penny. They can get results from me. For example, my first brand was focused on helping people to lose weight by drinking complete meal green smoothies. So can you imagine having a food brand who doesn't share recipes? So a recipe is the ultimate step-by-step -step guide to getting results. Anyone who shares recipes is definitely in the business of sharing how to do something. And I'm not sh saying that all of your content should be about how to do something. It shouldn't all be how to content, but I highly recommend that if you want to create a big viral brand, then at least some of your content should be how to content. You won't want all of your content to be how to content because you also do need to encourage people to take action in the first place by do, by sharing some of the what and sharing some of the why, but these are not the only types of contents that you'll want to create. You should also be creating content that builds a deeper connection with you as a person so that people can trust you and want to buy from you. Another thing that I hear suggested when it comes to free content is that free content should be less in depth than your paid product content. And there is actually some truth in this, but I don't think it should be a rule of thumb for all of your content. So typically what I do is I look at the channel that I'm going to share content on and the habits of the people who consume content on each channel. Now, some channels will cap your content. So you're, you're simply not allowed to post longer content, even if you wanted to. For example, if you are sharing an Instagram story, a reel, a YouTube short or TikTok video, these all have to be under 60 seconds in length, some of them even shorter. So it's just not possible to create longer content on those marketing channels. So obviously you have to play by the rules for these particular channels. However, when it comes to typical long form content, mammoth marketing content like blog posts, YouTube videos and podcasts, you can create content as long as you like, but that doesn't mean that you actually should. All of these content types are getting longer and longer and you will find people who consume your content at any length, but you do have to make sure that you are still engaging people if you are creating longer content. Most people skim read blog posts, so it actually doesn't really matter what length your blog posts are. But if you want to stick to the norm, the average word count for blog posts is 1,142 words. However, those blog posts that made it to the top of Google search results have an average blog post, le post length of around 2,000 words. So often with blog posts, the longer the better because the more you write on a topic, the more people will feel like they've got value, the longer they'll stay on your blog post and the the signals will be sent to Google that someone is enjoying your content and then the higher that they will rank your blog post on Google. 
and I wrote about that in my previous content called how to get your blog post to show up on the first page of Google. So go and check that out. YouTube videos, on the other hand, are typically around 12 minutes long on average. So this is the expected length for a YouTube video. And the average watch time per video is typically around 50% of the length of the video. So people who watch YouTube videos don't really want to be hanging around for a very long time on YouTube. They want to learn what they want to learn, or they want to be entertained, and then they want to leave. However, the average podcast length is currently 43 minutes long, which is a lot longer than YouTube. So if you have more content to share, it's better to try and share it in a podcast than a YouTube video, for example. Another great way to share more in-depth information with people for free is to run a masterclass or a webinar. Seeing as people will be much more engaged with your masterclass, that is a very good place to share more information about your paid products. People have different expectations about the content that they are consuming. People generally feel like they are going to get more valuable information in a masterclass than they are in a YouTube video. So that's why they'll pay more attention. So it's probably a very good idea to stick to what's expected for each platform. Saying that, my rule of thumb for my free content is that I create blog posts and podcasts that are as long as they need to be to help someone get some kind of result from them. And I often end up finding myself writing 5,000 word plus blog posts because I just simply have so much to share and I don't want to deprive people of something that I feel could help them. So generally, I don't make my free content any shorter than my paid content. On the contrary, I often make my paid content shorter than my free content. In my free content, I often share stories, which lengthen my podcasts and my blog posts. And I often share a lot of the what and the why to encourage somebody to actually take action. However, in my paid content, I am less trying to entertain and instead I am focused on getting people results in the fastest time possible. So I save my stories for my free content unless I can tell a very short version of a story to make a crucial point in my paid content. Although I don't go into more depth into one individual subject in my paid content, what does differ is that I will include a broader range of topics that are necessary to get results. So for example, in my paid products, I might have 30 different lessons to help people get results. But in my free content, I might create one piece of content that is an overview of a summary of all 30 lessons, just like a brief paragraph of all the steps that someone needs to take. So I definitely do go in more in depth by drilling down and really focusing in on absolutely everything that somebody is going to need to get results when they buy my products. In my free content, I share what people want to know based on what they are searching for. However, in my paid products, I include what people need to know based on what I know that they don't know. For example, on Google, people might be searching for how to make a green smoothie taste nice. And that would be a very good blog post to create. You are giving people exactly what they want. But in a paid product, you would want to include information that people wouldn't necessarily be searching for. People don't know what they don't know. For example, in my paid product, where people are trying to lose weight with green smoothies, I educate people on how to count calories, why their mindset is stopping them from losing weight, which ingredients are harming their health, how to stay motivated to lose weight. And these are topics that pe people don't necessarily want to search for because it doesn't feel as exciting as how to lose weight with green smoothies. But once people have paid for a product, they are much more likely to follow it to the letter to get the results that they want. So should there be any overlap between free content and paid content? 
Yes, there should be an overlap. It is to be expected that some people will have read some information on a particular topic that will also be included in a paid product and this isn't necessarily a bad thing because repetition reinforces behavior change. The more times people hear something the more likely they are to take action. Also people are less likely to take action based on paid products but when they've paid for something they have skin in the game and they are much more likely to take it seriously. Have you ever heard the phrase there is no transformation without a transaction or if people don't pay, they don't pay attention. So this couldn't be more true. So what actually are the real reasons that people pay for information products, especially when a lot of the information might already be out there for free? So you might think that people pay for info products to get as much information as they possibly can get for their money, but this is not true at all. What people actually pay for is results not information. So really it doesn't matter what type of product you are selling as long as you are getting people results that they want. So why is it that people are much more likely to get results from paid products than free content? And there are several reasons. Number one, people who pay, pay attention. It is a well-known fact that people don't value free content. So although you might be pouring everything into your free content, only a small fraction of people will actually take action after consuming your free content. And the main reason is because there is free content everywhere. There is too much free content now. So why would somebody trust that your free content is the content that they should be taking action on? There is no sales page for free content. You are not promising people massive results after consuming one piece of content. All you are doing is giving people information. Whereas on your sales page for your product, you are showing how your product has got people results. So people are paying for the results. And as a result, they have invested something of themselves into their own transformation by paying money. To get a transformation, people need to meet you halfway. You can't provide everything to help someone transform. They need to invest in their own transformation. Putting money on the table helps them to cement their own investment so they are much more likely to take action. If they don't take action, they won't get the results. Number two, people want organization and structure. People who are serious about getting results want to get results as fast as possible. Most people who have decided that they are going to get results are willing to pay for them and they want to know that, that what they are investing in is a system that is structured to get results fast. Almost all of the content contained inside most courses is available for free. But because this content is not organized for free, it is almost impossible to get the same results without paying for a system. When you try and get results from free content, you don't know if there are any pieces of the puzzle that are missing. And more than likely, there are things that are not shared for free that are critical to the success. Almost everyone has different systems and it's better to just follow one person's proven system rather than getting confused by cobbling together too many pieces of free content. It's very unlikely that somebody will have shared everything that's in their paid program for free online. So you would have to cobble together free content from a variety of different people. And often this free content will contradict each other, leaving you in a state of confusion and inaction. The third reason that people are willing to pay you rather than consume free content is that people are paying for access to you. One of the main reasons that people don't take action with free content is because they don't have a coach or a mentor to guide them through the process and help them if they get stuck. When you buy a product, you gain the right to ask for clarification and to help to put that product to use. 
And if you offer any more formal help, such as coaching as part of the package, people are much more likely to want to buy your product as they will also get accountability and motivation to take action. Part of the product that they are paying for is individually tailored to the customer's needs and that is definitely worth paying for. The more people ask for help with your paid products, the more that you can improve your products and provide an even better experience for the next product. So when people ask for help, it's a win-win scenario for everyone. You won't get anywhere near the level of feedback from your free content and you'll also get way more testimonials from your paid products too. Number four, the reason why people will pay is that people are paying for access to your community. So if you offer a members community or a group coaching or a mastermind as part of your paid product, people see that as very valuable. Everyone likes to feel like they are going on a journey with other like-minded people and it's really good for people to be able to work alongside other people and even collaborate with the new contacts that they have made from your valuable community. Other people ask really good questions so it's also very valuable when you can answer people's questions publicly because that benefits everyone. Everyone learns from the questions that other people ask which is why group coaching programs are so popular. And the fifth reason that people are paying for your products is that people are paying for the exact action steps to take. People need to know that they are taking the right action steps in the right order. When you share free content, you don't always ask people to take specific information. When you share free content, you don't always ask people to take specific action. A lot of your free content is sharing information. If you are creating a course or running a coaching program, people will want you to give them specific actions to take at each step of the way. So including these in your paid content is crucial to getting people the success they need. For example, the free content that I have just shared with you now has given you a lot of things to focus on, but I've not given you any specific steps to take at the end of this content. So the likelihood of you taking action on it or even remembering it is very small. However, if I was to share this information in one of my paid programs, I would probably give you an action step to make a list of the content that you want to share for free and content that you are going to give as part of your paid program and then assess if there is going to be any overlap between the two and what the differences are going to be. So now that you know how to tell difference between free and paid content, would you like to know how to grow a tribe of millions with your message? I am sharing how to do this in my Moving Millions Masterclass. I am sharing with you how to grow a magnetic movement and really put your business on the map. And if you would like to watch that immediately, you can go to kathkyle.com forward slash millions. And now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.